Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this day. We are so grateful for these graduates who have come. We are thankful for the lives that are being led by you into the fields that you have given them, Father. We ask, Lord, that you bless each one, and as they receive their diploma, they look to you for the next step in their lives, Father. We honor you with them. We honor you this day, and we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Greetings from the Office of the President. Now, this is to all our Campbellsville University graduates, their families and friends, faculty and staff, all those who have gathered in this assembly. Wow, an assembly. Just, just look around you for a moment. How long has it been since we can say that we can do this? Yet, here I am coming to you virtually. And I apologize for this video abstract of, of reality. But did you know that we're having 17 of these assemblies? That's right, 17 across the width and breadth of Campbellsville University all the way from Kentucky to California. This really demonstrates the growth that has occurred at CU in these recent years. And unfortunately for me, that means that I'm going to have to use this avenue to arrive to be with you and to be on time in order to get to the next place where well, you understand. And besides, I have to tell you, my old regalia, get a little thread more, I don't know that it could handle 17 in one week. But make no mistake, this is a momentous occasion, albeit with a much smaller group than would be the norm. But, but today is, is not about pomp and circumstance. It's not about caps and gowns. It's not about speakers and music. Today is about each of you, the graduates, that within your di discipline and surrounded by your fellow students and your faculty, this is your milestone. Graduates, everyone is really gathered here to celebrate your victory, your triumph, your, your achievement, your graduation. So congratulations. I pray God's blessing on each of you today and and always, as you open this new chapter in your lives. I would like to add my welcome to that of Dr. Spears and congratulations, graduates, on getting this milestone. And congratulations, parents. I don't know which side of the room is the most excited right now, but um, um, this is really a great accomplishment, and I hope that um, after the excitement wears down from this uh, graduation um, in the next few days that you will find some time to thank your parents and your family and friends and maybe faculty members who are instrumental in getting you to where you are. We, none of us get to where we are all by ourselves. We all have people who support us and love us and empower us. And so I hope that you take some time to reflect on that in the next few days and to thank those people. And where you are, you, you came into this room as pre-service teachers, but when you leave this chapel, you will be in-service teachers. And you've done your pre-service teacher training during one of the most difficult periods in American education history during a global pandemic. Um, and you have worked alongside your cooperating teachers, learning along with them how to handle um, virtual instruction and hybrid part face-to-face -face and part virtual instruction, and you've developed uh, technology skills that alongside them. I think the pandemic, one of the, uh, one of the consequences of the pandemic, a good consequence is that we are all better teachers now than we were before because we've had to become um, more flexible. We've had to learn new strategies. And, and you, so you have learned how to be a teacher during that time. Uh, but the challenges won't end next year. I know the pandemic, we're 
we've got vaccines now and we're hoping that um, next year's classes will look a little more like they have in the past, but your students are going to be coming to you traumatized by this pandemic and with uh, academic deficits, gaps in their learning. And, and so you're going to have to continue to learn new strategies to help them catch up. I don't say this to scare you because I know, uh, because I know how uh, wonderfully our faculty have trained you. Um, you were trained by people who have decades of experience in the public schools in addition to advanced degrees and credentials and we have poured all of our knowledge and expertise into you and so I know that you leave here ready to meet the challenges that you will encounter in your uh, classrooms in the coming year. So today we are celebrating, we're, we're combining two ceremonies into one. We, we have a traditional pinning ceremony that we always have in the School of Education before the graduation ceremony. Um, but due to social distancing, we've combined those events. So um, we're, Dr. Hedgepeth is going to come up and, and she is going to confer your degree. She's our provost and vice president for our academic affairs. And then um, Dr. Magruder, our undergraduate chair, is going to read each of your names. And as she reads your name, you're going to walk across the stage and your advisor will hand you your pin. And the pin signifies membership in Kappa Delta Pi, um, which is an honorary education society. And we will also be giving some certificates. At this time, you'll be handed those certificates as, um, as, as of recognition of going above and beyond in uh, areas in education. And then uh, Dr. Hedgepath will also hand you your diploma cover. Then you will have a picture made together, and then Dr. Hedgepeth and your advisor will step back, and, and if, you would, if you would like, you can lower your mask and have a picture by yourself as well. So, um, so we'll get started now. Uh, if Dr. Hedgepeth and Dr. Magruder will take their places. Good afternoon. It's great to see you all here. Um, just a few, I'll take a liberty or two to make a few remarks. It's because this is number 17, so you're the, the end of the road of a, of a long week, but it's really been an amazing week. Uh, so this is an extra special time for me. I, I thought I would just be exhausted and, and, and struggle, but it's been so energetic and you guys just look so great and so happy to be here and excited. And we're so honored just to be able to provide these, these uh, celebrations for you. You know, I have an education degree from Campbellsville and I have a master in education degree from Campbellsville. It has served me very well. And to come back and teach in the School of Education of course, I did my time. I was in public schools for about 10 years, teaching middle and high school. You learn so much. So I know you all have goals and aspirations for what you want to do later in life, but really focus on the experience of being with these kids the next few years, learning how the, and watching how they learn and how to be relational and, and how to make a difference. You know, really feel that passion for why you're doing it. Because it's really, it's all about the kids. I still say that today, you're my kids, even though you're really adults, but it's all about learning and it's all about creating those experiences. So um, again, I, I won't be too sentimental, but I do, do wanna say that I'm proud of you. Um, we support our teachers because it's such a hard profession and it's so noble to choose it. And uh, we, we have, we've had nursing ceremonies and social workers who just wanna make a difference. And, and, you, and teachers fall into that category. It's, you're just a different, you're just wired differently. Uh, because it's not about, we know you don't want to make a million dollars because you're not going to. Just be, just be, be ready, even if you're the, you're, even the superintendent doesn't make a million dollars. So it, it really is all about service. 
Uh, what would we do a little differently, because we're not in the larger commencement service that we normally would be in, in the gym in Powell Athletic, was, is what we traditionally do for undergraduates on the Saturday. Of course, this is the first Saturday of May. It's Derby Day. We're having graduations. I'm sure you've seen the prom picture sessions going on everywhere. It, it's kind of a crazy but exciting time. Uh, the campus is beautiful. And we're in the comfortable chapel with you here today, and we are spread out and we're safe. And that's just the right way to do it. Um, so typically I would present you uh, to the president and the president would confer your degree uh, at the larger commencement. Uh, since as you saw, Dr. Spears, our interim president, he, he's not here. I've had uh, the pleasure and the honor of going through the, this tradition with you at these services. Now, check it out later today. We will have our official commencement video released around six o'clock tonight. And that's more of a commemorative video that goes through all of the, the different traditions and symbolisms of the larger commencement where the president will give his charge and uh, we'll have all the other different uh, folks involved who you may not see here today. So before we get started, let me ask you all to stand, please graduates. You know, what confers your degree is when you meet the requirements for your degree. Some of you may be waiting for the final grade on Monday, I'm sure. Uh, hopefully, uh, I know it's all gonna be fine, or if you graduated last year, it, it's done. But the conferral is on your transcript, and so that's the most important thing. So knowing that you will meet the requirements for completion for your degree, and uh, you will be conferred towards your degree. I now will ask you in front of your family and your friends and the faculty to move your tassel from the right to the left. And congratulations. So I believe Dr. Magruder will come now and uh, you will start your line around by rows. Uh, and I will see you over here when I hand you your diploma cover. So again, congratulations. Congratulations to the graduates. You did it. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. And, and I would also like to say that Dr. Hedgepath deserves a round of applause. She said 17 graduations, and she has been involved in every single one of those. But I appreciate that they saved the best for last. <laughs> All right, so we will get started. And before, as I read the names, the advisor will come up to do the, the pinning. But I also wanted to just explain a little bit about some of the awards that will be given. So the first one is an Academic Achievement Award. And if that's mentioned, that means that this student scored in the 90th percentile or better on one of the Praxis exams. The Above and Beyond Award is for candidates or graduates now that have completed over 300 clinical hours uh, prior to student teaching. The, the minimum requirement is 200, so for them to have a, a completed 300 is pretty remarkable. And then the third one is the Global Participation Award. You know, before COVID, we used to do global experiences, and hopefully we will do those again. So we have a few graduates that actually were able to participate in those global experiences. So first, we will have the early childhood graduates, and Dr. Sharon Hunley will join to, to pin those students. The first one is Melanie Baird. Sarah Coley.
and interdisciplinary early childhood education degrees, Lachelle Barnett, and she earned the Academic Achievement Award. Taylor Blevins, and she will be joined with her mother, Miss Susan Blevins. Alicia Bullock, Above and Beyond Award. Michelle Mathis, she earned the Academic Achievement Award, the Above and Beyond Award, and the Global Participation Award. Kendra Simpson, the Above and Beyond Award. Andrea Spradlin, Above and Beyond Award. Katie Welsh. And we have one candidate that is earning an interdisciplinary early childhood degree and a P5 certificate as well, Caitlin Baldwin. So now to begin with our elementary education uh, degrees, Dr. Dottie Davis will be joining those. And the first one is Becca Brown.
Brad Burton Academic Achievement Award. Michaela Campbell, Academic Achievement Award. Samantha Clark. <laughs> Andrew Coy. Madison Day. <laughs> Casey Givens, Academic Achievement Award. Haley Hall. <laughs> Madison Kisselball. Ashton Lead Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Lauren Sears. Megan Whitaker, Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Mary. 
Laura Widus Academic Achievement Award. Our middle school candidates will be joined with, by, with Dr. Chuck Hamilton. And the first and only one is Caitlin Gage, Academic Achievement Award. And we have one 5 through 12 certification candidate, and she will be joined by Ms. Susan Blevins, Samantha Fulton Academic Achievement Award. Dr. Pennebaker worked in the School of Education in the 1980s, serving as the director of the student teaching program. Education faculty select the recipients based on criteria established by Dr. Pennebaker's family. Those criteria are excellence in the teacher preparation program as demonstrated by good academic standing, campus service, outstanding performance in student teaching, and a commitment to the education profession. This year's recipient of the William K. Pennebaker Award for IECE is Alicia Bullock. The recipient for P5 is Ashton Leet. The recipient for 5-9 is Caitlin Gage. And the recipient for 812 is Tevin Washington. Okay. Um, and I don't think he's with us today. And um, our P12 recipient is Madison Bishop, but she is unable to be with us today. Um, we're also uh, giving our award, we have both 
valedictorian and salutatorian in this class for the School of Education. And so I'm going to give those awards. Our valedictorian is Ashton Leet. And our salutatorian for this year is Casey Givens. This time we're going to hear our special music is the Tuba Euphonium Quartet. After uh, they perform, our student speaker Ashton Lee um, will come and uh, speak a few words and then Ashley Fox, the Director of Alumni Relations, will uh, come and install you as alumni.
Well, congratulations to my fellow graduates. This journey we have been on has been incredibly worthwhile and at times very challenging. I'm sure I'm not the only one who questioned once or twice whether or not they were cut out for this somewhere along the way. But now, look where we are. It seems like just yesterday, we sat in this room for OR100 our freshman year, and now we're graduating. But I think we know that we did not get here on our own. We had so much support through each twist and turn of our journey. So first, I wanna say thank you to all of our family and friends. Thank you for encouraging us each and every day. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for your sacrifices of time and energy that propelled us forward on this journey. I also want to say thank you to our professors and everyone serving in the School of Education. Thank you for taking the time to get to know us as more than just students in a class. Thank you for working hard to answer our questions and help us any way possible. Thank you for believing in us, even when we didn't believe in ourselves. Thank you for preparing us to step into our classrooms and empower each of our students. The impacts you all have had on us have been great, but the best part is that these impacts will not stop with us. They will go on and reach far to help change the lives of each and every student that will soon sit in our very own classrooms. So thank you. And thank you, my fellow graduates. Thank you for the laughs and the memories made over the past four years. Thank you for the homework help and the study sessions. Thank you for the listening ears and for just understanding. No one else on this campus could understand the joys of helping a student succeed or the stress of finishing a unit the night before it's due like we all did. We always had each other's backs and always wanted the best for one another. And we have certainly learned a lot in these past four years. We have danced together in rhythmic movement, diagrammed too many sentences to count in linguistics, attended many PPDs and co-taught lessons. We have studied theorists, written countless reflections, and could probably tell you the difference between formative and summative assessment in our sleep. <laughs> we even had to embrace teaching virtually during the pandemic. We have learned together and we have learned from each other. As we go forth from here, I challenge each of us to be lifelong learners, always seeking to grow and become better educators than we were the day before. As we're experiencing both excitement and some nerves about what's next, let us remember that each class, each exam, each lesson plan, and yes, all 200 observation hours have prepared us for what we've been waiting for the chance to step into our own classrooms. As we do step into our own classrooms, we will begin another journey full of highs and lows. We will have the opportunity to empower our students both in our classrooms and for life beyond the classroom. We will get the privilege of seeing children's eyes light up when they understand something for the first time. We will have the honor to tell a child that we are proud of them when they've never heard that before. May we not take those things for granted. Instead, on those hard days, may we hold tightly to these precious joys that only teachers get to experience. In closing, I leave you with one final challenge. May every student who steps foot into your classroom learn that they are loved. The Lord has placed the calling to teach on each of our lives. And with that calling comes the calling to love. May we show the same support, encouragement, and love that has been shown to us by so many to our very own students. I believe if we do this, we will truly empower our students to change the world in their own way. Once again, congratulations. Our hard work has paid off, and now our life's work with our students can begin. Thank you. Good afternoon and congratulations, graduates. My name is Ashley Fox. I am the Director of Alumni Relations, and it is an honor to share this very special moment with you. 
On behalf of the Campbellsville University Alumni Association, I want to welcome you to a very proud, loyal, and diverse family. As a graduate, you now have a network of over 18,000 alumni that spans many states and countries. You will always be a part of this community. Campbellsville University is in your story, in your experiences. Be proud of your accomplishments and continue to be servant leaders in this world. From this day forward, you will be called upon to take on a new role, the role of an alum. And some of you might be thinking, oh gosh, she's going to ask us for money. But well, I might do this later, and it is important. There are so many other ways to serve your alma mater. For example, you may be called to help recruit new students, or maybe you are called to reach back to campus and share insights and encourage those who are yet to finish. Whatever that calling may be, I encourage you to stay connected. Again, congratulations on your graduation, and welcome to the Campbellsville University alumni family. As you all exit the chapel this afternoon, we do have a gift for you so you can show off your new CU alumni status. Thank you. Um, before we uh, recess, I, I do want to say uh, once again, congratulations to our graduates and parents. Um, and I want to say a, a big thank you to Dr. Hedgepath and, uh, oh, there she is. <laughs> uh, Dr. Hedgepath and Jamie Lawrence and Jennifer Lauer and Ashley Fox, who have all been present for all 17 graduation ceremonies, and they did this to make these very special events for all of you, so I appreciate that. And I also want to recognize uh, Elizabeth Franklin, who is the administrative assistant to the dean, and all the staff in the School of Education for organizing this event. These, these things don't just happen. We, we on the stage, we show up in our regalia, but they are the ones that put all this together. So I want to thank them very much. Um, and I'd like to thank Susan Blevins for the music and our tuba ensemble for the music and Ashton for speaking to us, giving us a very important message. I really liked um, especially that last statement about making sure that all of your students who come into your classes know that they are loved. That is an important lesson. So, um, As we recess, I will ask that you stand and um, the faculty will recess first and we will go out the door on our left and then we will be followed by the graduates. And then once all the graduates have recessed, parents and family, if you will recess out the door to my right, um, that would be great. And then we'll meet outside. Thank you very much. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Father, and we thank you. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon our lives. Father, we thank you for seeing us through this um, graduation. Father, we thank you for the accomplishments of these graduates. And Father, as they leave this building as CU alum, we pray that you would just bless them. We pray that you would lead them and guide them as they go into the field of education, Father, and that you would just be with them as they love and encourage students wherever you are going to place them. And Father, we pray that as we leave here today, you would watch over us and keep us safe. We pray that you would just dismiss us with your love, your grace, and your peace. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.